ask yourself this question, what is the strangest thing you've ever bought anybody for Christmas? Most people buy earrings, chocolates, gifts like that, normal gifts. Not this clown, not this clown. 2014 was the best and the worst Christmas present I've ever bought. Me and Emma had been together about two years at this point and it were two weeks before Christmas and I knew what I wanted to buy her and then she said this. Oh, I love micro pigs. Look at this video on YouTube. I'll set the scene for you. We're about to move house and the house that we're about to move to had a, like a massive field behind it. So I thought, seeing as Emma had said how much she loved pigs, what a fantastic idea for a Christmas present. After much research and Googling, where to buy a micro pig. Oh, that's it. I found this guy that was selling micro pigs on a farm. So I went to have a look at this micro pig with my friend. And when I, when I went to see it, it was a little pig like that. So I thought, oh yeah, how cute and easy to look after. I love it. So this was about two weeks before Christmas. I paid the guy my money. And then I got home and what transpired, I never imagined. In order to keep a pig, you need to be a licensed pig owner. So the paperwork was just stacking up and stacking up and stacking up of all these licenses you need to get, transportation. So a pig can only go from one place to another and it needs to stick on that exact route. So I had to write down the route that it was going to. I knew in my head that I'd have to take it to my mum's house before I picked it up because I needed to pick it up two days before Christmas day. So. I went, I'd got all this paperwork, all these licenses that were just stacking up and up and up. Uh, licenses to transport it, licenses on a specific walk. So you can't just walk a pig anyway. It's got to be a specific walk. So I'd got all that, all that set up. And then I said to my friend, we need to go pick this pig up and we need to take it to my mum's. So I phoned my mum up. Hey mum, I'm bringing a pig round. Can I keep it in your kitchen? Mum's like, yeah, of course you can. It's only that big. It's only a little pig, it won't cause any harm. So I'd got all this pig food and everything set up at my mum's. My friend and I went to pick this pig up and it can only be described as a small Labrador. This pig that was about this big was now like a small dog. It was massive. This was now two days before Christmas. So this was like Christmas Eve Eve. My friend were like, what are you going to do? I'm like, well, I ain't got any other option. I didn't have any more money. I'd already paid for it. I'd got all this license that had taken me all this time to build up and so that I were a licensed pig owner. Um, I'm going to take it. So we bundled this pig into the back of the seat and I had all nice comfy blankets for it and everything. We drove with this pig on the back seat <laughs> from the farm to my mum's house in Leeds. So we knocks on the door and we've got this pig and my mum answered the door and she's like, that's not coming in my kitchen. You're not bringing that in here, Reese. No, you're not bringing that in here. I'm like, mum, please. I need, I, need to, I need you to look after it in kitchen. <laughs> so she's like, bring it in, bring it in. <laughs> so I took this pig into the kitchen and I'm like, it's only for a couple of nights, mum, you'll love it. So... Anyway, so this pig's nice and settled and it's just kind of sat there like looking around. So I gave it some dinner. My mum were furious. She were like, you cannot keep a pig in my kitchen. <laughs> anyway, Christmas Eve comes and I knew obviously I wanted it for Emma to, to be, you know, to see it on Christmas morning. So I goes to collect this pig on Christmas Eve and my mum were glad to see the back of it. Although I think she secretly loved it. Gets the pig back in the car. <laughs> And, and pulls up outside our house. At this point, this pig's like making all these grunting noises and it's squealing and getting all excited. So I left the pig in the car, went inside and told Emma that she needed to wear earplugs. She were upstairs, this was quite late on on Christmas Eve, Emma were in bed. She puts these earplugs in and she's like, why do I need to wear earplugs? I'm like, you just do, just, just put these earplugs in because I didn't want her to hear the pig and spoil the, the surprise on Christmas morning. Anyway, I get, I, I'm carrying this, this pig and they're heavy, right? And they make a lot of noise when, you, when you're holding a pig. Um, so I've then put it in our kitchen. <laughs> I put it in our kitchen and, uh, and gave it some toys and some biscuits and off I went to bed really excited. I was like, this is going to be epic. This is going to be the best present 
anybody's ever got anybody. This is gonna be absolutely insane. Couldn't even sleep Christmas Eve because I was that excited about a reaction. Christmas morning comes and I went downstairs and the pig still sat there, like really happy. And uh, <laughs> we only had a small kitchen. And so this pig looks absolutely massive. And um, I said, anyway, I said, come downstairs and, and see your present, see what Santa Claus has brought you. And she opened that door. So you know, like, you always wish that your husband would pay attention to stuff that you say and stuff that you want. Don't wish that on yourself. Honestly, just don't wish it on yourself. <laughs> like, it's all right if you say you want a necklace. So you say, oh, I like that necklace. That's nice, isn't it? And then you get up Christmas morning, you've got it. My mistake was saying that I've always wanted a micro pig. But in my mind, micro pigs, when you see them on telly and stuff, they're really, really tiny, aren't they? They're like, they literally can fit in that cup. They're so small. Uh, that cup that they take a picture of it in must be the size of a house because they're absolutely massive. So... I knew nothing about what Reese's plan was, nothing whatsoever. I had literally no clue what I was getting. So I'm all of a sudden, it's Christmas Eve, and Reese is saying, oh, you know, um, you need to put these earplugs in. I'm like, why, why do I need to put earplugs in? It's, you just put them in, you just need to put them in. Bearing in mind as well that he'd kind of gone and done a disappearing act two or three times already before Christmas, and I wasn't really sure what was going on. They were going out with my mate to go shopping, which is a bit odd, because they don't normally go shopping. So I was already thinking it were a bit strange, but I had no idea what was coming, literally no idea. So I got up Christmas morning, I come downstairs, and Reese is like full, honestly, absolutely full of excitement. It was like a child, it was so giddy. And I opened the kitchen door, and before I even opened it, the smell, just the smell. <laughs> It absolutely stunk. <laughs> and I opened the kitchen door, and I'm not kidding you, the size of this thing, it, it was absolutely massive. And it's just like sat there looking at me. And I just looked at Reese, and I didn't even know what to say, because what do you say? I mean, what do you say with that? You can't say, like, why have you got me that? Because it's ungrateful and rude. But why have you got me a pig? <laughs> it's in the kitchen. There's hair everywhere. I've got people coming round for Christmas dinner. I'm trying to prepare all food and everything else. I've got it all chopped up on the side and stuff, you know, all ready. And I know I've got hay everywhere and my house absolutely stinks. And this little pig, I'm just thinking, well, we can't, we can't do it. We can't have it here. And bear in mind as well that we're meant to move into this bigger house, but it's got delayed. And I am, we've not moved yet. So I'm thinking, well, where's it going to go? Where I've got a small garden at minute. Where am I going to put it? So I looked at Reese and I just said, I didn't even know what to say. I just said, we can't, love, I'm really sorry, but we can't keep it here. Like, there's just, it's not possible. And he's like, well, I can't take it back. And I said, well, you, you're going to have to. Like, there's no, there's, like, look at it. It's unhappy. Like, I didn't think it looked very happy. Like, it's, I just thought it must be missing its mum. Like, you know, it's, it was just sat in a, <laughs> it's not meant to be in a terraced house in a kitchen, is it? A pig. So it's just sat in this blooming, in this thing. So I end up, he, he takes the phone. He's ringing round, he's ringing these, obviously it's Christmas day, nobody's up, so it's early morning, so he's ringing round, the kids are in the room opening their presents that Santa's brought, I've got this pig running around my kitchen, squealing around my island in the middle of my kitchen, <laughs> just really excited, it was like, literally like a zoo, it was like absolute bedlam. So she said, we can't keep it, I'm like, what do you mean we can't keep it? I've got licences this, this deep. I'm a licensed pig owner, and it's your Christmas present. She was not happy at all. <laughs> she looked furious. <laughs> so I'm like, what are we going to do when it's running around the kitchen? She says, well, you're going to have to take it back. I said, take it back? I can't take it back. I didn't have the license legally to take the pig back. So I'm like, I, can't, I physically can't take it back. So I'm ringing around this farm saying, to try and get him to say, can I, can I bring it back? Anyway, the guy says, yeah, bring it back. Obviously, he want to happy. Lost my money. Um, so we put this pig back in the car, which is now illegal because you can't now transport the pig because it's not, I didn't have the license because I never intended to take it back. So off we goes to this farm <laughs> with this pig in the back. And I was just like, if the police pull us at this point, I'm not licensed, I'm moving what's classed as an exotic animal across the country so and this is christmas day right so we're trying to get this pig to the farm to get back to cook everybody christmas dinner and carry on with christmas i'm at this point i'm ruining christmas <laughs> right? 
<laughs> Merry Christmas, here's your Christmas present, I've ruined it. So anyway, we get to this farm. Basically, we had kind of had to convince Reese to take this pig back. Um, partly because, obviously, I didn't want it to be unhappy. I didn't think it were a right place for it to be. It just didn't look like one of those little cuddly micro pigs that you have in your house that looks like a pet dog. You know, it just it just didn't seem right for it. And I felt like it were away from its mum and it were, you know, it were going to be upset. But also, like, I had to play on that side a bit, a bit as well because partly it would just stunk and it was massive. So we've been driving, obviously, we got there and like Reese just picked it up and he carried it over to this guy and this guy comes and he gets it and he takes it and he puts it down back in its pen with its mum. Oh, its little face, honestly. It was so excited. It just ran off up to its mum. It, it, it could, immediately it recognised its mum and it just ran off up to its mum and it was so excited and it was so giddy. And I've had to just, like when we left that day, I've had to keep that memory in mind and just hoping that this this like pig just stayed there with its mum and grew out into old age because the thought of anything else just absolutely devastates me but I don't think that it's a I think it's a it's a farm that kind of keeps them there and basically sells them on to people to look after so we yeah, we did that we drove then back home I were relieved I didn't have a pig but bearing in mind by this point we've had to drive like uh, probably been out about two hours the kids are at home and um, obviously teenagers old enough to look after themselves but they were at home um, on Christmas Day, by themselves, <laughs> and we're driving back, and I'm panicking then because I'm thinking I've got everybody coming round for a meal, um, I've got to get all the food on. Not only that, but my house is still covered in hay. My doorstep coming up to my house, the entire pathway where he brought the pig in was covered in hay. Everything was covered in hay. So I had to fly home, get cleaned up, get it all sorted out. Honestly, it is a Christmas that I will never forget. And every year, Reese's mum sends me a picture of this pig to remind me. <laughs> and people say I'm unpredictable. I have absolutely no idea why. That is a story of the worst and the best Christmas present that I have ever had. It does go to show just how much she loves me. Um, but just be careful what you say you want before Christmas. And now we need to get down to the van because I need to get trimmed up, I need to get all the presents ready to go and deliver out, get all the snow globes packed up, um, and off we go. Oh, Reese, I can't find batteries. I need batteries for lights. I don't even know why you're trimming up. Well, because we're going to go delivering out these presents, aren't we? And so I want to make sure that it's all like, all the van's all trimmed up and feel Christmas. Anyway, just because we're back at cottage doesn't mean I can't trim the van up. It's our second home. You look like an elf. Yeah, I am an elf today, look. Look at that. I've got my dungas on, and my fluffy jumper and my hat. I am an elf. That's what the look I was going for this morning, so I'm pleased you've noticed. Very attentive of you. Right, so that's the batteries in the lights. Let's hope they work. I just love magnetic hooks. Look at these, I can hang all my trimmings. <laughs> I didn't know where to put them, but now I've got these hooks, it's brilliant. I am running out of space on this little tree though. I decided against that tree. We did try and put it in, didn't we, Reese? But it was just absolutely ridiculous. Yeah. It was literally, you couldn't move it. <laughs> you couldn't get into the sink. You couldn't get into any of the drawers. <clears throat> I tried to even fold branches down, but it didn't work. So we're going with the small wooden tree again. It don't matter, I've still got the festive spirit. That's all that matters. Oh my... Like... Well, you got yourself in a tangle there, Because Anna. lights, why do <laughs> lights never, ever, ever... I don't matter how you wrap them up, they're always a tangle. Oh, it's just so frustrating. Do you want me to help? No, I can do it myself. <laughs> hey, there we go. Look at Daisy, she's still sulking from Ibiza, is Daisy, that's what it is. Little Daisy, little Daisy on a dusty road. She's still sulking from being in Europe, she can't cope without the heat. She's having a monge. Every day she gets up and just looks at me like, Mum, why have you brought me back here? It's freezing. We don't have a chimney, so we're having to hang stockings under the skylight. <laughs> yeah, exactly, so it can still come down. It's going to get stuck. It will get stuck. It will, it'll get stuck in there. It'll be all right, what we've got, Daisy. Oh, look, I forgot about that. 
<coughs> There's his little outfit. Oh. You can be an elf as well then. Look, Santa's little helper look. Team Santa. She just does not look impressed at all. She's not She's not all festive, is she? Right, Daisy, you're stocking. If you don't be good and start cheering up, you're not going to get anything tomorrow. No. Oh, look! <laughs> oh, no! What? Oh, no, reindeers aren't working. Oh, no, why does that always happen? Maybe I need some different batteries. Let's try some more batteries. It'll be one bulb that's gone in one of them. Don't say that. And then you've got to find it. Does it's it little, even work like that? It's a little anymore? game that everybody plays at Christmas. Because it used find to work like that, bulb. didn't it? But I'm not even sure it does I don't anymore. know, to be honest. You're a proper scruff. You haven't even washed up since last time we were in here. I'm going to name and shame you. Don't name Look and at shame me. the state of that. You dirty little man. That's getting cut out. <laughs> I genuinely don't think it's working. Oh, we've got broken, broken. <laughs> oh, we've only had them up like one year, these. This is why I tell you, you can't have too many lights, because now look. Oh, hey. yay! <laughs> look at that. It was just batteries. So now we need to get these presents under the tree ready to deliver out. We've got a range. Of socks, warm mittens, hats, all sorts. I've got another three bin liners full of milk. <laughs> mm. <laughs> so, yeah, we need to get delivering because it's Christmas Eve. And if I don't get out and get this done and then get to bed, Santa ain't coming, is he? I hope you've all had a really, really lovely Christmas and really enjoyed your day. I hope you've all got some lovely stuff. Um, and I hope it's not been a pig. <laughs> So I had Emma's Christmas present all sorted this year and then she said this. So cuddly, I just want to throw my arms around him and give him a big squeeze. If you haven't seen that episode, you can watch it right here. I'll put a link on where we went to Scotland and she met that Highland cow. Merry Christmas everybody. See you next week on New Year's Eve. Keep writing your own story. <laughs>